The Ides of March and those Oscar nominations are now behind us, and heading into the first official day of spring, there are heroes, icons, and mysteries galore, both real and fictional, on the horizon. Disney Plus drops its second Marvel series and another piece of the MCU puzzle on March 19th, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There's a trio of new offerings from the dark underbelly of the internet and America in the HBO docuseries Q, Into the Storm, the Queen of Soul herself in Nat Geo's Genius Aretha, and stars supernatural thriller from down under, The Gloaming. With the bloom of a new season literally looming, which one will be the show you have to watch? It feels like it belongs to someone else. That show represents a lot of things to a lot of people. Delayed and shut down by the coronavirus for a while, and clearly leaning into the ethos of the global health crisis and its economic ravages, the cultural awakening arising out of the killing of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and many other people of color, and the blatant rise of crypto-fascism in this country, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier takes flight off the huge success of WandaVision on the House of Mouse streamer. But the six-part former Captain America sidekick series from showrunner Malcolm Spellman couldn't be more different than its pretentious predecessor. Now, Disney Plus only made the first episode available, and a lot of that is about setting the stage. But picking up in the rubble and rebirth of Avengers Endgame, and with Cap himself gone, this seems to be, unlike the cold fusion of WandaVision, a pretty straightforward and satisfying Marvel movie, aka Kevin Feige Speedball, in six parts with some narrative inquiries about what the hell is really going on, all Saran wrapped up in a buddy movie waiting to happen with Mackie and Stan. Though appearances can be deceiving to some extent. Because like all Marvel projects, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier can be a bit of a pharaoh's tomb. With mysteries, treasures, and baubles galore, but, and no spoilers, but, if it doesn't crash the streamer upon launch, keep your eye on a certain famous shield. And I'm not talking about Nick Fury's old crew. What do we got? Brace yourself. We don't get murders like this down here. Alex? Molly. I don't think you're the right person for this job. It might trigger bad memories. What are you talking about? Coming off the launch of the New Zealand-based The Luminaries last month, and now the Tasmania set, The Glooming, Star seems to be turning into the South Pacific premium cabler as well as the home of all things power. And, based on the Vicky Madden-created Moody Murder Mystery, which premiered on Aussie streamer Stan in early 2020, and more splayed large with a gorgeousness more fitting for works in the Louvre than even the small screen of premium cable, that's okay-ish with me. Now, beyond the beauty of the Australia Island state, the Emma Booth and Ewan Leslie-led The Glooming is itself a bit of a true detective season one, and a lot like those Brit Grit series of the 1990s, which means there's a grisly murder, some cult clutter, and an unpacking of suspects, as well as the psyche and past of the Booth and Leslie portrayed investigators, which over eight sometimes plodding episodes can be quite demanding, as the narrative rarely matches the visual exquisiteness. In recognition of all you've done, the people of the world hereby crown you Queen of Soul. Make sure the world only sees the Aretha Franklin you want them to. First of all, don't expect to hear Aretha Franklin classics like Respect or A Natural Woman in the Nat Geo 8 episode event series Genius Aretha. And that's indicative of a larger absence in the third installment of the Genius franchise, the first one centering on a woman. With all the respect paid to the Queen of Soul, who passed away in 2018, in the Cynthia Erivo star from Pulitzer Prize winner playwright and the United States vs. Billie Holiday scribe Suzanne Laurie Park, Aretha never really reveals the essence of the divine and determined genius of its subject, at least from the episodes I've seen. Now, when Tony, Emmy, and Grammy winner Erivo sings, well, time just stops still. And that alone is worth the price of admission, if you know what I mean. Otherwise, with a Jennifer Hudson-led Aretha movie on the horizon, a klutzy time-jumping tactic that takes the viewer back and forth from a very young church-bound Aretha, played by a superstar in the making, Sheehan Jordan, to the Arivos portrayed adult Aretha fighting racism, sexism, the long shadow of her father and the men in her troubled life, and the music industry itself, takes this genius off-key in a chorus of biopic cliches. So while the much-anticipated Falcon and Winter Soldier seems to deliver the goods and more, the Marvel effort is not the show you have to watch this week, though it is likely to draw the biggest crowd of all the contenders. The show that you do have to watch this week 
is the HBO docuseries, Q, Into the Storm. Rarely do you find a docuseries, or any series for that matter, that is as frenzied and delirious as its subject matters itself as you do with Q, Into the Storm. Now, don't get me wrong, Q is, somewhat like the dangerous pro-Donald Trump misinformation movement, very problematic at times, and will test your patience in more ways than one in search of a payoff. Yet submerged in the sewage that is the politically paranoid fuel, to put it mildly, QAnon movement, the Cullen Hoback directed and Adam McKay EP'd HBO Six Parter aims to go deep into the back streets of Manila, the dark recesses of the internet and the American body politic, and up on the besieged steps of the Capitol itself, with a cast of characters that could almost be straight out of a David Lynch project if they weren't such real life lynch mob horrors on the keyboards and streets. Where it ends up in the pursuit of who Q really is? Well, that's another matter on this riddle wrapped in an illusion, swallowed in a conspiracy theory of ignorance, hate, and every flat earth dingbat, white supremacist, occasional Republican member of Congress, and more out there. Now, there are long stretches of Q that seem like a hangout gone wrong, and sometimes even flirt with promoting the very grifters and snake oil salesmen it depicts. However unconventionally amateur it is, and it is at times, the docu-series is a must-see for a clearer perspective on the damaged America of 2021 leaning into and heading into the elections of 2024. And that is why Q Into the Storm is the series that you have to watch this week.